Russia gathers over 100,000 soldiers on the Lyman Kapiansk axis. Here's a summary of the article. Cookies, device identifiers, or other information can be stored or accessed on your device for the purposes presented to you. Ads can be shown to you based on the content you're viewing, the app you're using, your approximate location, or your device type. Personalized ads can be shown to you based on a profile about you. Market research can be used to learn more about the audiences who visit sites, apps and view ads. Your device can receive and send information that allows you to see and interact with ads and content. Different devices can be determined as belonging to you or your household in support of one or more of purposes. Your device might be distinguished from other devices based on information it automatically sends, such as IP address or browser type. This post received a score of 4400, with an upvote ratio of 96%. Here are the top comments in response to this article. Articles like this really need to include maps. Here's a map showing the Lyman Kupiansk axis. It's in the northeast, close to the border to Russia's Belgorod Oblast. Russia has been making some minuscule gains there in recent days. Thanks. The enemy has gathered a very powerful group of forces. More than 100,000 personnel, over 900 tanks, over 555 artillery systems, and 370 multiple launch rocket systems. On the Lyman Kapiansk axis. For context, Russia deployed 120,000 personnel in Afghanistan at the height of its campaign there. Remember the Bloomberg article that said Russia is currently deploying just 1,400 tanks and Ukraine has actually deployed more than that? And here we have 900 tanks just in one section of the front line. Puts things into some perspective, especially regarding the Western support of tanks. Here, have 15 tanks. Good luck. Western tanks were practically designed around being outnumbered by Russian armor. So even a small number can be extremely effective when used right. The issue is more than Ukraine at the moment lacks air support which is a critical element in NATO doctrine and the war has overall kinda bogged down into trench warfare. Not to mention they are heavily designed to keep the crew safe so if the tank does get taken out, the crew is more likely to survive so that they can come back to crew another tank. Another issue is that sure we are giving Ukraine a lot of top-end weapon systems and training to use said weapon systems, they do still heavily lack a lot of basic gear and equipment. For example, armored vehicles or transports. It is fairly common for Ukraine soldiers to still use normal civilian cars or vans for personnel transport or transportation of supplies. Greater than if the tank does get taken out, they can come back and crew another tank. This is one of the simplest strategies Russia has yet to learn. The more people you can preserve to fight another day, the better chances you have. It is worth the money and the resource to protect your men. It's also how you gain more skilled personnel. All in one place, you say. It would be a shame if something were to happen to them. The first batch of cluster munition arrived just on time, it seems. I wonder if they turned on their air defense systems this time. Does Russia even have effective air defenses? They do have a lot of offensive artillery and missile systems, but what about defensive? Likely to force Ukraine to divert some of their focus from the south. 100,000 is a lot of 1,000s. I hear it might even be 100 of them. This video was automatically created by Reddit to speech. The article and comments in this video were selected from Reddit according to their upvotes, and any paraphrasing was performed by smmry.com, without any human intervention.